All right, I'm going to try to knock this out in 20 minutes. Wish me the best of luck. This is your AEW Dynamite review for July 6, 2022. What is going on, everybody? I am Steve. If you are new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button down below. Give the video a big old thumbs up. Share through social media. Hit that bell notification. Be notified when I upload, when I go live like I do every single weekend for Around the Point. Overall, I thought this episode of Dynamite, considering it was the post Blood and Guts episode of Dynamite, I thought the show was in the middle. I'm not saying it was a bad show. I'm not saying it was a great show either. I thought overall they had some good moments and they also had some moments that, let's be fair here, were kind of like whatever you could skip through, really, to be honest here. Now, there's some of you who will probably say, Steve, you're wrong. I thought the show was great. Steve, you know what? You're wrong. I thought the show sucked. And that's fine as well. You are entitled to your opinion. But let me know your thoughts down below in the comment threads. Or if not, let me know on Twitter at Heel Steven. Now, what I liked is that they announced matches for Ring of Honor's Death Before the Sun pay-per-view coming up in a couple of weeks. They announced that Wheeler Yuta will be defending the Pure Championship against Daniel Garcia. So we're going to get some Jericho Appreciation Society versus the Blackpool Combat Club uh, effect, if you will, in the mix in this match. We're also going to get Jay Lethal getting a shot at the Ring of Honor Television Championship as he goes up against champion Samoa Joe. I know they've had a program that's kind of been lackluster, if you will, so far on Rampage and AEW Dynamite whenever they, whenever Joe's on television. I know he hasn't been on TV for a minute now. I know he's filming a movie or something on Peacock. And if you heard the tag team champions, FTR tonight, they issued a challenge to run it back one more time with the Briscoes. In the rematch from Supercard of Honor. And we all know how amazing that match was. So I look forward to watching that pay-per-view. When it does happen in a couple of weeks. The show overall opened up with Scorpio Sky defending the TNT Championship against Wardlow in a street fight. I don't know why they made this a street fight. The only thing about this that was like, oh my god, like hardcore was the fact that Scorpio Sky hit a low blow to Wardlow in the opening segment of the match. Yes, Scorpio Sky came out with American Top Team. Wardlow came out by himself. But even if that, like, you kind of knew going in where they were going with this. Yes, Scorpio Sky hit Wardlow with the championship. But even that, like, they did Scorpio Sky no favors at all. They really, really didn't. And yes, you already know by now the result. Wardlow got the win. Wardlow is the new TNT champion. I can understand why they would change the title. Because they were in Rochester, in the home of Brody Lee. And in the eyes of AEW, Brody Lee was the greatest TNT champion of all time. Awesome. But other than that, they did Scorpio Skies no favors whatsoever. They really, really didn't. And I know Scorpio Sky can go. But goddamn, throw him a bone. <laughs> Seriously. But other than that, Wardlow is the new TNT champion. And let's see what he does with the belt. Let's see where they go with this. I look forward to it in some way, shape, or form. From there, we see backstage John Moxley, who will, who will be defending the AEW Interim Championship against Brody King. He talks about how there's people that think that Brody is going to surprise him tonight, but little does he know that they're wrong. And from there we get Smart Mark Sterling, and he has an offer for Keith Lee, which he refused. Throughout the night, Smart Mark Sterling was trying to get people to sign a petition to get um, Swerve Strickland out of the promotion. So there was that as well. We get a in-ring promo of Christian Cage and Luchasaurus out comes Matt Hardy. And Christian Cage literally was spitting fire in this promo at Matt Hardy. Talked about how, you know, Matt Hardy 
is using would, would basically you know do anything to make himself relevant he talked about how he would turn on his brother's situation at a blink of an eye just to be you know relevant in AEW and shit like that again it was a very you know savage promo by christian cage give this guy the world title seriously give this guy the fucking world title <laughs> okay i'm just saying we also get backstage a Jake Hager and Claudio Castagnoli um, promo. Uh, Hager mentioned how, you know, Claudio was never a champion in Ring of Honor. He was never a champion in WWE. World champion, that is. Let me correct myself here. And he will not be a world champion or any champion for that matter in AEW. And from the looks of it, they're going to have a match. I think next week. So be it. The battle of the former members of the um, We the People. <laughs> so there's that. Of the real Americans, or where the fuck they were called back in the day. We get the second match of the night. We get the Butcher and the Blade versus um, Swerve, Strick, Swerve in Our Glory. That's what they're calling them. Swerve in Our Glory of Keith Lee and Shane Strickland. I thought the match for what it was worth. Um, it was good. You know, good tag team match to put on TV, good back and forth. They were talking about also, you know, about Swerve and Lee not getting along. There was an exchange, kind of an accident, if you will, that could have cost him the match. But when it was all said and done, Keith Lee and Shane Strickland got the win. After this, out came Powerhouse Hobbs and Ricky Starks. And they were going back and forth. Then the Young Bucks came out. And they basically issued a challenge. Let's go triple or nothing. Considering the fact that both teams couldn't beat Jurassic Express. But the Young Bucks did. So next week at night one of Fighter Fest, it's going to be the Young Bucks defending the tag titles, the AEW tag titles, against Powerhouse Hobbs, Ricky Starks, and Keith Lee. And Shane Strickland. So that should be a fun match, in my humble opinion. Uh, from there, we go to Eddie Kingston, who came out, cut a promo. How, even though Blood and Guts is over, he is still not satisfied that he didn't get the victory for his team. You know, he didn't get, he didn't make Jericho bleed. So he wants to have one more match with Jericho. It's like this program is never going to fucking end. That's just the vibe that I get from all of this. It's like, bruh, the point of the blood and guts is to end the feud. It's over with. You move on. And it's like we're still stuck with this program. It's, it's stupid. It really, really is. From there, you see Jericho, who popped up on the fucking Titan Tron. And they're in the parking lot. And you see the members of the uh, Jericho Appreciation Society. In this case, Ty Conti. Attack Ruby Soho. So there was that. Whatever. It was what it was. We get another segment, another promo, if you will, of the Dark Order. The Dark Order. Again, they're in Rochester. They're in the home of Brody Lee. So it was only fitting for them to come out. They brought out, they brought out Negative One. They talked about how they announced, basically, that they're here to stay. They're not going anywhere. Now, it's been, it's been obvious that... You know, Stu Grayson, Allen Angels have left AEW, and they're going to be there to stay. I think also Cole Cabana is going to be in Ring of Honor, so there's that as well. But the Dark Order is here to stay. QT Marcel came out. He got attacked. It was basically a feel-good moment, which was awesome. Cool to see. From there, we get a match between Penta Oscuro and Roosh. I thought the match for what it was worth was pretty good. Something you would have seen in AAA or any other independent promotion out there on a weekend. I guarantee you, if this was Impact Wrestling, these two guys would have been going at it for the Impact World title. They acknowledge that Roosh is a former Ring of Honor World Champion in his own right. And I thought the match for what it was worth was good back and forth. There was a moment on the, in the outside where... Alex Alberhantes and Jose were going at it. The two geeks were going at it outside. Uh, it was kind of funny for what it was worth. Roosh low-blowed Penta, removed the mask, and got the win 
So Roosh got a win in his AEW debut, which made sense. It was great, awesome. And let's see where they go with all this. From there, we get the As Boys and the Acclaimed versus Bear Country, Fuego del Sol, and Leon Roof. Now, Max Castro was going to rap. He gets interrupted by one of the members of the As Boys. So this whole thing is basically the As Boys trying to one up the acclaim because I guess Billy Gunn, the father, is pro acclaim and not to his children, whatever the fuck it may be. It looked like the acclaim were going to get the win. There was a blind tag. And then they started brawling after they won the match. Yes, they actually won. They started brawling. They started fucking brawling. And Billy Gunn is like, what the fuck is going on? Little to our knowledge, basically, Billy Gunn turns on the acclaim. So it was all, I guess, in, you know, rouge, if you will. And from here, we're going to see basically the acclaim versus the Asboy is going to go at it. That's the program now. In, in a way, it, it sets up the acclaim to become baby faces. So let's see where this goes. From here, we get Marina Shafir and Nyla Rose going at it against the makeshift team of Thunder Rosa and Tony Storm, known as Thunderstorm. Yes, Thunderstorm. That's the name of the team, Thunderstorm. And I'll be honest, I feel like this match went a little bit too long for my liking. I'm not saying it was a bad match because really, to be honest, it was not a bad match. I just felt like this match just went too long, in my opinion. I have a right to that opinion, okay? There's some of you who probably thought, no, Steve, you're wrong. This match was great. You're just being ignorant as fuck. It is what it is, okay? If you thought this match was great, good for you, okay? I'm not going to hold you to it. But obviously, obviously, just so you guys know, all right, uh, Marina Shafir and Nyla Rose lost, not surprised at all. They fucking lost to the team of Thunderstorm. Because why would they why would they win? What makes you think they would win here? Seriously, I, I really want to know. What would make you think that they would win tonight? Didn't happen at all. Did not happen at all. Um but there was that. Okay. Likely they'll run it back. That being Thunder Rosa and Tony Storm. They're going to probably have another match down the road. And so be it. Let's see where they go with that. Let's see. I did mention already that the FTR did issue a challenge to the Briscoes to run it back for Death Before Dishonored. Again, I loved how they've announced these matches that are going to be banger of matches for the Ring of Honor pay-per-view. I'm happy that Ring of Honor is still around. I'm happy that there's a pay-per-view for Ring of Honor with the AEW production. That's fine. Awesome. But I think for Ring of Honor, you got to give it its actual network. It needs to be on a platform, a channel, something. Um, I would pitch, hey, you know what? Dedicate the entire episode of Rampage to Ring of Honor until you can find it a home. You know, or remove dark or dark elevation. You don't need two fucking darks. I'm just saying, okay? Just fucking saying. Um, again, the match list isn't official yet. The entire card that is isn't really officially announced. Just some of the matches that I already mentioned. But I want to assume that Jonathan Gresham will be in, involved on the show. Um, likely as well, you know... Uh, Mercedes Martinez, who is the women's champion as well. So we'll see what else they announce in the upcoming weeks. But again, I do look forward to watching that pay-per-view when it does happen. And from there, we get the main event of John Moxley defending the interim AEW World Championship against Brody King. And I thought for what it was worth, it was a very solid match. And I'm pretty sure these two guys went at it before back in the day on the indies. And here again, it was a very good, solid back and forth match. They gave you this. They gave you the thought that Brody King could get a win over John Moxley, but to no avail. When it was all said and done, Moxley hit the uh, paradigm shift, and then he basically locked in that bulldog choke. 
where Brody King passed out. And still, AEW interim world champion John Moxley. That's how they closed. That's how they close off the show. I loved how they talked about how, you know, if any event will go extra and all that stuff, and it literally ended at 10 p.m. Just saying. I also love the fact that hey, all this talk, right? But yet, you know, all out. They had a banner announcing all out, but there was no mention of all out on the show. Just saying as well. But other than that, I thought Dynamite was a solid show in the middle, if you will. Again, it had its good moments, and it had its moments that were kind of skippable. If there's anything on the show to go back and watch is obviously the interim world title match between John Moxley Brody King. Um, I would go back and watch Penta Oscuro versus Roosh. And I guess if you really want the tag title, the, the, the tag team match, I'm sorry, of uh, Shane Strickland and Keith Lee versus the, the Butcher and the Blade. Uh, but again, they did Scorpio Sky no fucking favors at all. The worst TNT champion in the history of the title. But again, I understand why they did it. Again, I do. But again, give me your thoughts in the comment threads of this video. Did you enjoy the show or not? I want to know. Follow me on Twitter at HeelSteven. If you are new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button down below. Give the video a big old thumbs up. Share it through social media. Hit that bell notification. Be notified when I upload a video, when I go live. I did record yesterday my review of NXT 2.0 Great American Bash, which is in the archives of the channel. This Sunday, we go live once again for another episode of Around the Point, where we talk about all the news in the world of wrestling throughout the week. So make sure, again, you are subscribed to the channel. Don't want to miss that one. All right, guys, I'm out of here. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. I'm Steve, and I'm out. Peace out, everybody.